Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. There are not many tools like Geomagic Freeform out there that allow you to turn a mesh or a solid body into a new voxel-based form. As a voxel, we can sculpt or emboss unique shapes onto our parts, or use a combination of sculpting and prismatic modeling for product development. What makes Freeform even more unique is that we can interact with the object using our haptic device, letting us have a live feedback on how we're manipulating our mesh and where our tools are. This unique approach to modeling, however, can take a little time to understand. Throughout this video, I'm gonna talk about how modeling within Freeform works, then go over two examples to show how the different tools interact with one another. For starters, I'm gonna open up a new file and insert in a basic square block as a clay body, which is Freeform's way of saying it's a voxel. As I interact with this clay body, my haptic device provides some resistance, letting me know I'm pushing against my object. Carve is one of our base tools, and can erase sections of the mesh that I'm hovering over. As I hold down my haptic device's button, I can start removing sections of the clay and adjust the size of my tool and level of resistance of the material via my settings. This is where the magic of voxel modeling happens. As I'm removing geometry from the object, it's actually infilled in with some mesh information. Because of this, there is no non-manifold sections within our mesh which would result in zero geometry. Everything is perfectly formed together. I can adjust the coarseness of my clay if I find that my voxel edges are too large in creating a blocky form. At this current level, the carved sections appear a little blocky, but as I make the coarseness finer via our object settings, newly carved sections are truer to the shape of the tool. This new level of coarseness is so fine, in fact, that we can see some edges where I'm carving away. Just as easy as it is to remove information, I can smooth out my voxels together to have a nice, even surface on our object. The Hot Wax tool is probably my most used tool, since it can add or remove clay while smoothing at the same time. Using this, I can highlight over sections I want to meld together, and adjust the intensity if I need more or less detail. To show off further how voxels work in a 3D space, I'm going to run a shell command on this block. Since I have carved away at this model at different levels of coarseness, it has various levels of surface detail. Instead of attempting an offset of the surface, which may result in some kind of uneven thickness or folded in sections, Freeform uses voxels to ensure that the entire model has a uniform thickness throughout it, regardless of how small a section may be. Using a midplane, I can cut this shelled block in half using the separate tool. This lets me see inside of it. Looking internally, we can see that the sections that I carved away are accounted for in the shell command, and even has small ridges indicating where areas might not have been smoothed yet. So with some of the tools and methods behind the software under our belt, we can start utilizing them together to begin sculpting. For starters, I'm going to import in a scan into Freeform. After selecting our mesh, we're given a couple of import options to the type of body we want this to be. I'm going to set this to be a clay voxel model, and then set the coarseness to be very fine. You can see that the clay model has a few bumps within it. These could either be from the person moving while scanning, or just the way that the scan was processed. If we were to use this as a reference body, these imperfections would be carried over into our final part so I'm going to want to smooth them out ahead of time. Using the Smooth Area tool, I can set a level of smoothness and highlight the entire leg. After applying the smoothing command twice, all those small little bumps are removed, so I have a nice even surface to use as a reference. I want to design a cover for this leg, so I'm going to draw a patch onto the clay body using the Curve tool. Patches and curves are extremely handy when adding features, since it's how we can designate what areas we want to manipulate. 
To make sure this spline is on the clay model properly, I'm going to enable the project to clay option as well. Now I can select on different spots of the clay model to outline the area that I can use for future tools. One such tool is going to be the Emboss with Images, which allows me to project a picture onto the clay model and create some textured features, similar to other 3D texturing tools. Using the newly outlined sections of the clay model, I can select on the different spline lines which will set the boundary of our emboss. Then I can click on a spot that I want as the center of the image. I can see a preview appearing with some additional arrows to reposition or adjust the heights of the emboss. All these options are also on the below toolbar if I want to adjust the height at a precise amount. When I confirm the height and orientation of the boss, it looks like it lost some detail compared to what that preview was. This is actually due to the preview having a finer level of coarseness than the clay model itself. We can adjust our clay model's coarseness by right clicking the model in the object list. After making the model have a finer level of coarseness, our preview now better matches what that final outcome will be. Looking around this part, I can see that the 3D texture did not add any thickness to the model, which may cause some issues when we go do our final Boolean operation. There's a couple ways we can add some thickness to this, but I'm going to use the Tug tool to pull on the clay. Using our existing curves, I can make sure I don't move too much by creating a boundary again. With the newly added thickness, I can rerun the Emboss with Image tool to create a new 3D texture across the raised area. Just like before, we get a nice cover across the mesh without infolded areas. We can use these curves for more than just boundaries. The Pipe tool is used to create new clay geometry along a path. With this, we can add a border around our Emboss image and merge everything together. Adjusting the diameters of the spheres, I can see how well it overlaps with our emboss. Clicking Apply merges everything together as a single clay body. Sometimes, we may not want to merge newly added geometry right away. I'm going to create some new curves on the back of this leg, which I'm going to use to make as a back strap. The curves only go up to the edge of our border, and looking at the preview, we can see that the newly formed clay won't fully merge with the rest of our model. Toggling on the new piece option of our tool is going to make any newly formed clay as an independent model instead of merging it with the existing clay. Now we can use our deform tools such as tug to move the clay slightly more into the boundary. I use this method of creating new clay and deforming it into our part often when I need to make sure something has a perfect meld together. When finished, the boolean tool can combine the backstrap to the rest of our model. We can choose the level of coarseness we want for the finished object based on the two different clay models that we're combining together. To make sure the two models smoothly combine, we can use the hot wax tool where they meet. For these spots, I'm going to use the mode that only smooths the area that I'm interacting with. At this point, I'm ready to remove the leg so I'm just left with the cover. Using a duplication made after running our original smooth command, I can use the boolean operation to remove it from the main clay model. Now I'm left with just the guard and backstrap, which fits perfectly to our leg. At this point, it's ready to be exported as a mesh, or we can add some additional geometry to any spots that we want. There is more to freeform than just this, however. So far, we've only been adding geometry to an existing clay model but we can create new clay bodies based on certain properties that can speed up our modeling process. One of my favorite examples of this in Freeform is the Shell Cut tool, which can be used to quickly create cast around a mesh. I first need to insert in a plane and sketch a 2D drawing where I want the cast to sit. I'm going to orientate this plane so it's facing normal to my screen using our plane options. 
Instead of needing to duplicate our mesh, scale it, and run some kind of Boolean operation, and then finally trim away the top and bottom, I could use just this 2D sketch. Similar to how we use the curves to outline our emboss, this 2D sketch is going to be used to outline the casting. And in my options, I can set the thickness for this new shelled clay model. After a short delay, a new object will appear around the mesh and in our object list. To trim this cast, I'm going to use two different methods of removing clay. First, I want to use the curve tool to outline a section of the mesh I'm going to separate away from the rest. I can use the separate tool to choose on the newly formed spline as our boundary. Where I select on the model will be the active piece afterwards. Now I can delete or hide that new object that appears over the knee and remove it from the cast. As for the top and bottom, I want a straight cut across it, which may be tough if we're going to be drawing curves onto the model. Instead, I'm going to make a new plane that is tangent to the cast on its side. Now I'm going to draw in a few sketch lines, which I can use with the extrusion tool. This tool can be used to add or cut clay. When we select on our sketch entities and click next, we can see a new plane appear, which can be dragged through our cast. Clicking the Apply Cut option removes any previewed clay body from the active one. To add some finishing touches, I can use the Smooth tool to remove any sharp edges with a low level smoothing on the entire object. The ability to add new geometry and tug it into the proper position, to smooth the entire object or just in an intersection, or even create new geometry to perfectly fit an existing one, are some of the software's many benefits. Bridging sculpting and 2D parametric modeling lets you have an endless possibility on what you can make. I hope you found this video helpful. This is just an introduction to some of the tools and how they interact with one another. If you are curious about a specific tool, you can select on its icon on the bottom left while it's active to open its help guide. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this or another CAD, printing, and 3D scanning softwares.